budget was handed down last night and, as we all know, it's the most important day of the year for one man. What a day it is. It is like the Melbourne Cup for finance nerds. That's his hamstring stretch, by the way. Morning. Welcome to Budget Day. Not only Budget Day, Sam, it's the first time in history Budget Day and Reserve Bank Board Meeting Day on the same day. That crazy old man screaming from the street is right. <laughs> it was a huge day for digits, but when you don't have Koshy practically blasting off in his trousers at the very thought of a ledger, <laughs> how do you make the budget interesting? Channel 9 tried a different tone. The budget curse. Seven years of deficits and failed ideas have ended the careers of treasurers and leaders alike. Now it's the turn of Morrison and Turnbull. Run! Run, you fools! The budget! <laughs> the budget will kill us all! Watch the budget or Channel 9 will steal your children! <laughs> no, seriously, they, they do that. <laughs> but... No, it's, it's, like one of, it's like one of their things. Uh, but all the channels had noticed Scott Morrison had a new slogan. Sticking to our plan for jobs and growth. Jobs and growth. Yeah. Jobs and growth. Now, jobs, growth, jobs and growth. Hang on, jobs and growth. Three word slogan That's there. That's right. That was the Sounds line of the familiar. night. Repeat after to me, Hoshi. Jobs and growth. Jobs, jobs and growth. growth. <laughs> jobs and growth. That's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah, look at this stupid treasurer trying to reduce a complex document down to a three word slogan. We TV presenters would never do that. Like always, there are winners and losers. We're going to go through the winners and the losers this year. There will be winners and losers in this year's budget. Virginia knows that she's a winner. She'll let Michael work out what that makes him. <laughs> but if you really need to make a boring set of numbers interesting, leave it to Australia's best retail politician, Barnaby Joyce. When it comes to holes in Labor's costings, the trick is to make it relatable. $3.25 billion out. Just so people can understand what that means. 3.25 billion kilometres from Earth and you're half the way to Pluto. You are just in <laughs> interstellar gaps of space as far as your budget goes. Right now, about 370,000, 300 kilometres from Earth is the moon. You go there about <laughs> over 8,000 times if you were, if you were 3.25 billion... If you had 3.25 <laughs> billion kilometres, I could say. Nailed it! <laughs> Who could forget those childhood trips to the moon? <laughs> but lunar holidays aside, Barnaby's right. The budget is an important document and accuracy is crucial. So it's important that we get it right. Tell them, Scott. This is test match, not 2020 Big Bash, when it comes to fixing the budget. It requires test match patience. Uh, it requires test match tactics. Of course, budgets are like cricket. So let's have a look at how accurate previous budgets have been at predicting the deficit using Hawkeye. <laughs> so here's the budget deficit Hawkeye. Getting above this white line represents a budget surplus. Now let's start with Swanee's six budgets. He started with a pre-GFC Beamer and then four of his last five budgets all predicted a sharp rise into surplus. After that, Swanee was unceremoniously taken out of the attack. Bad news for him. But then we've got Joe Hockey and Scott Morrison's budgets, again predicting some good lift up off the pitch. So this is what our treasurers told us they would deliver, and this is what they actually delivered. <laughs> yeah, they've been predicting bounces, but kept bowling underarm. <laughs> So let's see what the third umpire says about our budget predictions. Mm. Yes, we are out <laughs> by $137.4 billion since the GFC. Or, to put that in terms you'll understand, that's 371,000 trips to the moon with Barnaby <laughs> Joyce.